I see I've got a little bit that's getting away from me, so I kind of want to do another one of these deals with the needle and kind of pull it back. And uh, this knot that I'm tying is just a, uh, a simple little butcher slip knot. You, you repeat it, it's just kind of a loop is what it is. And you just Shall I slow it down, Freddy? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's just see if we can get a look at this knot. It's You've got both of them next to each other, one of them on the bottom and one of them on the top, and you're holding on to this short piece, and you just turn your finger and then pull that string through the middle, and then you pull it to lock it, and then you repeat the process all over again. It's just a, just a loop. It's a very simple thing. I remember it took me weeks to figure out how to do it, and then when I did it, I thought, boy, I sure was an idiot for not knowing how to do that immediately. I don't know whether I need this last one on here or not. How does it look? Yeah, it looks pretty respectable. Anyway, I'd make a nice roast for a dinner party. You could cut it in half and just have a regular meal out of it, but for a dinner party, it, it was all set on a platter with some vegetables around it, it look pretty, pretty rich. So anyway, let me give you another option here. The other option would be to take these muscle groups apart, where you've got a top round, and my advice to people that are doing this at home is when you take these things apart like this, and you get them all cleaned up where you want to make steaks out of them. Stick them in the freezer for a little bit, for an hour or so, where they get nice and firm. And then they're uh, a lot easier to deal with. But we're just going to show you how to cut them today, just without that. Let's see, I better take this silver skin off, even though it's not real important on a young pig like this, but I know how people criticize me if I don't. So there you go, it's off. And uh, this gives you some nice steaks that you could saute in a pan and make some of that nice country gravy that we talked about earlier. This piece here I'm working on is, uh, would be the sirloin tip if it were on a beef. And here's the top round section, which is the part that, the part that really has very few seams in it, and it's uh, tends to be dry, so you don't want to cook it too long. You either want to cook it just to where it's still nice and juicy, or else you want to cook it in some sauce and cook it for quite a while. If you, do it, if you go just well done, it's going to be real dry. So anyway, here we are. Let's get this stuff arranged here so we can see what we actually did. a little extra fat on the bottom round section and I I think that'll actually be pretty nice. I don't even think I'll trim that off because pork in this day and age tends to be kind of dry unless you've got some of those heritage breeds which this is not one of. So anyway here's our little project. Um, 
I think I'm going to cut this roast into a few pieces so you can get an idea of what it looks like in the center. There you go. We've got a nice little display and we've got a bunch of trim for sausage. We've got some nice sausage trim here. We've got some bones for the stock pot. And that's about it. And you got another story about butchery from Bill the Butcher. I don't know how many more I'm going to do like this, but it's been kind of fun. Like I said, Freddie's going to go to work for Ken Burns and I won't have him anymore. So anyway, Thank you much, and until uh, the next time, thank you.